Welcome back to Low Stress Math with Mrs. Bono. This is the final review before the final exam. This is Chapter 7, Transformation and Coordinate Plane. Ah, I usually think of a coordinate plane as two intersecting number lines. And they intersect at the point zero, zero. Now, those two intersecting number lines create, create has a name yet, create? No, I don't know. Create a grid that you can graph on. And we usually use an X and a Y, but it doesn't have to be X and Y. Now a coordinate pair tells you the location of a point, so it gives you the location of a point on a coordinate plane. Now, that po like again, to get a coordinate to get a location, you need to a right, a left, an up and a down. So that location is usually given as X and Y. So there's my coordinate pair, and you always write it in parentheses. Now the X coordinate, that is on the horizontal lines. And the Y coordinate is on the vertical line. Now the X coordinate on the horizontal lines, that tells you right or left. And the Y coordinate, that tells you up or down. X core, the X axis is the horizontal number line. And the, this word isn't supposed to be here, sorry. It should just be Y axis is the vertical number line. And the origin is where our two number lines meet. The origin is the point in the intersection of the X and Y. So that the point where the X and Y axes intersect. All right, so the point where the x and y axes intersect has the coordinate 0, 0. So 0, comma, 0. That's the origin. Now, a transformation changes something important about the points of a figure. Possibly cha possible changes include location, size, and orientation. So changes something. important about the points of a figure. Oh, almost wrote off the, the, about the points of a figure. So it could change location, size, orientation, you know, like location or size or orientation is the direction that it is pointed in. Okay. 
So what's an image? An image is the figure after the transformation. So image is the figure after, I'm gonna write that in red because that's really important, after the transformation. Now, I think about looking in a mirror and seeing my image because I'm the original, I'm the pre-image. My image is a reflection in the mirror after it has, well, if it's a good mirror, it transformed me into something better looking, huh? All right, pre-image is the figure before the transformation. Now, a reflection flips over a line or a point. A rotation is to turn a now, when you flip over a line or a point, usually you're flipping over one of the axes, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it's a different line. So a rotation is to spin around a point. A dilation is when you make something larger or smaller. And it has a scale factor. That's the thing you multiply by. So a dilation changes the size of an object it either enlarged to make it enlarges and that's when you have um, a scale factor remember the scale factor we used f as a scale factor that is greater than one or to reduce and if it reduces that means that the scale factor the f is less than one All right scale factor scale factor is the number that you multiply times all of the coordinates so scale factor is the number And we're calling it F right now for scale factor. You multiply by. You multiply by. And the way you find the scale factor. So scale factor F is equal to the image divided by the pre-image. And so if the image is bigger and you divide it by a smaller number, and you know it got big, it got larger. Now, a translation, that is to slide all the points in the same distance, the same direction. The same distance. in the same direction. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next page. Dun, dun, dun. All right, a point AB is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. So let's just draw a little picture for ourselves and we'll say AB is here and counterclockwise is the direction opposite a clock. Now, let's say that I have a little right angle here. Remember, a right angle is 90 degrees. So, hmm, yeah, it's down and then it would be over here, right? Because it's 90 degrees 
opposite of where it was. So what happens? Well, you remember we have A, B, usually I use X, Y, right? And then I switch them and negate the B here. So usually I do X and Y. So X and Y, you switch and negate the Y. This is A and B, you switch and negate the B. So let's find that, that is right here, B. Point E is located at 6, 5. What are the coordinates if it's rotated 180 degrees? Again, I'm gonna draw a little picture and I'm gonna put a dot here. Now, 180 degrees is gonna be to the line in the opposite direction, it's gonna be over here. So this is positive, positive, this is negative, negative. So what happens to my coordinate? They both become negative. Oh, the, if you looked up here, this is positive, positive, and then when it comes over here, it's negative, positive, right? And this is negative, negative, and this is positive, negative. So it kind of helps to know which way you're going. All right, now let's look at the next one. Point D is at 1530. If it's dilated by one third, so that means one third is my scale factor. F equals one third. Now we talked about this. When you're multiplying by one third, that's the same as divide by three. So if I have this point, 15 comma 30, and I divide the whole thing, each one by three, because that's a scale factor of one third, I am gonna get a new point at five comma six. Oh my goodness, I divided 30 by three and got six. I am a fool. My apologies, children. <laughs> 30 divided by three is 10. How did I get such a silly number? I don't even know what I was thinking. It's 10, so I need 510, which is D. Okay, the next one. Point D is located at two, three. What are the coordinates if it's dilated by three? Okay, so that means my scale factor is three. So now, instead of dividing by three, I have to multiply by three. So I have these points, two and three, and I'm gonna multiply both of them. So three times two and three times three. Multiply everything by the scale factor, and I'm gonna get a new point at six, nine. Multiply both of them by three. And six, nine is da, 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 number C. Okay, draw and label a reflection over the x-axis. Well, first I'm gonna highlight the x-axis. Now, the key to reflection is to know that distance to the line of reflection stays the same. So here I am at A, and I am gonna count one, two, three, four to the line of reflection, then one, two, three, four on the opposite side. So here's my new A prime. B is six to the line, so it's gonna be six to the opposite side, and C is four to the line, and it's gonna be four to the opposite side. And that's C prime. And now I need a, I need a ruler. You gotta connect your lines with a ruler. Be the good ones, here we go. <sighs> We're almost there. Bum, bum, bum. Ba, da, dee, dee, dee. Did I mess this up? I hope not. I'm gonna check my points, cause let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, look at me, I got them right. List the coordinates for A prime, B prime, C prime. So A prime is at negative one, four. B prime is at positive two, negative six. And C prime, is at positive uh, four, wait, I can't count. One, two, three, four, five. Positive five, negative, negative four. I made a mistake here. I'm at negative one, negative four. Wow, I'm just full of boo-boos today. At least I went back and looked at it, huh? Wow, think of that. A person who doesn't usually make mistakes looking back at their work just to make sure. What a shocker. Here we go. Draw this with those coordinates. So I'm gonna start 
by highlighting that so I don't forget. That's D, E, F, G with those coordinates. So that's going to be D at positive 8, negative 3 for D, positive 8, negative 6 for E, positive 4, negative 6 for F, and positive 4, negative 3 for G. There is my original shape. And now I'm going to do a translation. Remember, a translation is a slide. It moves all the points the same, di the same direction, the same distance. And it's giving me a little formula there. Plus 2, minus 5. Hmm, wait a second, I missed something. Oh, 10 to the left and 6 up. So I have to count points. 10 to the left and 6 up. So let's see. Oh, 10 to the left is negative 10. 6 up is plus 6. So it's going to be x plus 10, y plus 6. Okay. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 6 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here it is, my new g prime. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right on the line there. Okay, that's how you feel about it. There we go. F and then E. Wait a second. I could do this easier. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. And so I go to negative 2. And then I have negative 6 plus 6. That's 0. Here, that's easier. I could just use my letters. Here we go. E prime. Didn't put a prime on my F. And then D, negative 2, positive 3. D prime. Okay, now oh, I have to do another one. And it's going to go overlapping on this one. I can feel it in my bones. I'm looking at that. And it's going to overlap. It's all right. There we go. And let's see. Plus 2 is going to be 2 to the right. 2 right. Y negative 5 down 5. So X tells you right left, Y tells you up down. So I am going 2 to the right, 1, 2, and down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's my new G prime. Well, actually, that's G double prime. 2 to the right down 5, D, double prime. 2 to the right, down 5, E, double prime. And 2 to the right, down 5, F, double prime. So it does not ask me what any of these coordinates are, thank goodness. It just said to graph them. Now, what if you had written the coordinates and didn't graph them? I am sorry, Charlie. You would be getting that wrong. Okay. And the last problem on this page is find the height of the tree. Okay, I don't remember. Hmm. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is the altitude, which I don't have, so I'm just going to write A squared. B is the base equals 5, so plus 5 squared. And C is the hypotenuse, so it's going to equal 13 squared. Okay. A squared plus 25 equals 169. I have an equal sign, remember that? Mm, dot, 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 coming down. Minus 25 from both sides. And you get A squared equals 144. Oh, now I have to find the square root of A. The square root of A squared is A. And the square root of 144 is 12. And what's my unit? My unit is feet. Do not be defeated. There you go, 12 feet. That is the end of the review, and you're ready for your final. Take care.